Hey guys, this is Chris with Hook'em Up Snake Hooks, and this is a diamondback water snake. This is a female. She looks gravid, which means she's probably carrying young. That's why you don't see me really handling her a lot. She's kind of bitey. I'm not trying to mess with her a whole lot. I don't want her to avoid her young. This was actually from a catch for, with cold bloods and warm hearts. I caught it with my wife, Christina Johnson. This was caught out of a pond to which they thought they had cotton nuts. So what I'd like to do with this one is, is explain to you guys how the diamondback water snake can be confused as a cotton mouth. Number one, coloration. They're very much mistaken for them because they can flatten their heads out. And if you can tell the coloration is kind of a dark color from a distance, you would know that this was a diamondback water snake. Just by the head shape, you'd think, all right, well, I got a cotton mouth. Well, that's not true. And then body style also. They eat amphibians and, and fish and things like that in ponds. They have a really foul odor whenever they're messed with a whole lot. They'll emit a fume. Not much different than a skunk. They have a really strong smell. She's not real happy with me right now. Uh, I had to remove her because she was interfering with someone's pond right at the moment. And they have horses and things. And I'm not saying that they're aggressive to horses. Generally, they'll run away. Um, unlike cotton mouse, the other thing that you got to know about them is, if you can tell, she will do a little coil and she will throw a strike, but she doesn't do the big gaping mouth thing shown in defense. She only bites in defense. She thinks I'm going to hurt her and I'm not going to. Um, some of the ways you can tell this is not a cotton mouth. Very easily, the eyes, they're rounded and not like cats. It's really noticeable. And then their head kind of has a funny shape whenever they flatten out like that. But from a distance, it's going to look like a cotton mouth. The other differences are she isn't shaking her tail as violently as a cotton mouth normally does. They're very, very well known for shaking their tail like a rattlesnake. I'm not saying she won't, but if you can't tell even in a defensive posture, she's not. She's hiding her head from me. She doesn't want me to mess with her. She doesn't want me to pick her up. She's a very large snake. Uh, but it, like I said, she could be gravid, which these guys, I guess, the best way to put it is, I can't say the exact word, but they hatch the eggs inside of them. They don't lay nest or anything, and they have live young. Uh, the difference between them and plain belly water snakes, there's very little indifference. They do a lot of the same things, and they live in the same environments, uh, and pretty much the underneath are, uh, so I'm going to get a good look here. She has somewhat of a pattern where plain bellies do not. But they also yeah, have it where they kind of look like that. I made a bad identification on my first go with it. And you see, I don't want to use a tongue on her being gravid because it could uh, squeeze her and make her avoid her eggs. So I'm going to use one of my hooks. But you see, I'm not trying to pick her up like I do most of my other snakes because I really don't want to disturb her because I want her to go on and have, have young whenever we release her. This is what cold blood and warm hearts do. We go to people's houses and we remove snakes free of charge. This is one that I removed today um, out of Swan's Pond, like I said, that had a lot of these guys and they were just happy to know that they wasn't venomous. So the other ones that live there right now, we have no plans of going back and picking up any more. Uh, she was the only one that I was able to catch. The rest of them were staying pretty much in the water. During the day, they like to sunbathe a lot. They'll uh, lay out, get their sun, do things like that and then they hunt around at night. This is not the largest one I've ever seen but she's a really good size for it. I've seen a lot of these guys in the wild grow a lot bigger. Uh, I do believe the world record is 69 inches in length. So a seven foot or a six foot tall man is 72 inches so she, that would just be under six uh, just under six feet long. I mean we're talking well, what is that 69? Right about six four. foot nine. No, that would be just under, it would be about 5 foot 10, I guess. Maybe oh yeah, 5, more. yeah. So that's a good sized snake, I mean, so you can imagine a heavy body snake with that kind of length, you know, that could give a lot of legend how big the cottonmouth can be, because like I said, these are very, very good mimics. The water snakes are the best mimics in my opinion, I'm not going to go into a detailed argument or anything like that saying that, but they have really good mimicry skills they have the diamond head they have the coloration they're 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 just perfect for whatever they are for mimicry but there's telltale signs when they swim 
you won't see all their body. They don't float. Cottonmouths float in the water. These guys, you only see basically their head. You won't even really know how big they are. Uh, the other thing is, she's not bluffing like a cottonmouth. Cottonmouths gape that mouth real wide open in the backside. And, you know, um, I'll say their defensive behavior is a little more that than with the cottonmouth. The cottonmouth has got they're defensive, but these guys are a little bit more willing to strike, especially when cornered. Um, she's, like I said, a very beautiful snake. Uh, they smell atrocious for the most part. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna sugarcoat that. They smell pretty bad. Uh, I've caught quite a few Nerodia this year. That is the uh, Latin term for a water snake is a Nerodia. And all of her little cousins and things, are, they're all about the same. They all smell really bad, including the cottonmouth. You can actually smell them before you run into them. A lot of people ask me, do you smell snakes? And I say, well, yeah, I do whenever I walk up on them, you know, within distance is if they must. And, of course, it's like a skunk. You spook them, that's what will end up happening. But um, the thing about it is their bite's real nasty. Uh, they do carry some bacteria in their mouth, things like that. Mm -hmm. They really don't want to get tagged by one of these guys. Uh, and then, of course, you'll be picking teeth out. So I suggest if you want to handle one of these snakes or become into this, you know, use the right equipment, things like that. You know, she, she's a large snake. You know, I don't want to have to mess with her. And the way she has her head tight coiled is kind of hard. You'd have to stretch her out and uh, get her to uh, get her to open up for me a little bit. So, yeah, I'll try to give you guys a little length on what she looks like. Like I said, she's a pretty large snake. She was caught in Oklahoma. I mean, there you go. I mean, she, she threw a strike as soon as she's touched. Like I said, I'm not trying to get her too, too stressed out. I don't want her to be stressed out at all. I want her to go on, eat frogs, take care She's of her business. She's beautiful. I want her to take care of her business. But now you can see the head really well. It is really, really in a V shape. It's in a really good V shape right now. But you can see the eyes. They're not like cat's eyes. And they're more on top, close to the top of their head, still on the sides. But like I said, she's almost a perfect mimic. I mean, if uh, you're doing this a long time, like me and my wife have been, and a lot of people in the groups that these videos are posted to, you should be able to differentiate between a Nerodia species and a Cottonmouth species. You know, I can't always identify these guys in the wild right off the bat just by a tail or anything else because, you know, like I said, they're pretty good mimics. But And I'm not even the best with water snakes, believe it or not. I specialize more in your terrestrial venomous, uh, copperheads, things like that. I've had a lot of dealings with these guys over the years, but I can't really say I'm much of an expert on them. I still make a lot of mistakes in identification with them. I do know how to handle them. Um, catching them in water, you need a tong to do the work. Uh, other than that, I mean, you know, I use my good old trusty hook, one you guys see in every video. Uh, this is my particular favorite one. That you made. Yeah, this is the one I made for myself, and uh, I'm a real big fan of my hook and hook snake hooks, and a lot of my snake friends here are too, because they're actually really well made for guys this size. I mean, I'm not going to try to pick her up too much, but I'm going to show you guys that even it fits her perfectly, it's good for these snakes in Oklahoma, and she's a heavy-bodied snake. She's what I would use to work before I started working with cottonmouths, things like that, to get down their patterns and things. She's going to mimic a lot of the things the cottonmouth does. And just like with every other non-venomous snake, they have their counterpart in the venomous world. So this is how I work with snakes. Um, I, I work with non-venomous snakes, build your way up to where you can handle venomous snakes. Like I said, she'll, she'll show how she is, and she's going to be very upset with me. I'm trying to get her to calm down a little bit so she'll be a little easier to bucket. I'm going to have to move her to her new home. But uh, I just want to share this girl with you. Um, like I said, this is a joint venture with Cold Bloods and Warm Hearts. Uh, so for you guys' needs and that, I don't have the number with me right now. Look them up on Facebook. Uh, CBWH, uh, that would be them. And uh, give us a call if you guys ever need them removed out of your ponds or out of your yard. And there's a chance you'll either get me or some of my other really good friends that are just as good at it as I am. So, uh, you know, there's to everyone. Happy hunting. And this is Chris once again with Hook'em Up Snake Cooks and Cold Blood and Warm Hearts. You guys have a great day.